Good morning. Welcome to Wednesday's Daily Reflection. I hope you're settled comfortably, got your Bible and a cup of tea perhaps. I've got my brew. So here we go. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we do pray for each one who will be tuning in to this reflection this morning, that it would be an encouragement and a comfort to them. And above all, we pray for us all that as we open your word, we would encounter the living Lord Jesus and be changed more and more into his likeness, we pray. Amen. So we're picking up in John's Gospel at chapter 10, verse 11. Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand who is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away and the wolf snatches them and scatters them. The hired hand runs away because the hired hand does not care for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me just as the father knows me and I know the father and I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. I must bring them also and they will listen to my voice, so there will be one flock, one shepherd. For this reason the Father loves me, because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have the power to lay it down, and I have the power to take it up again. I have received this command from my Father. Again, the Jews were divided because of these words. Many of them were saying, he has a demon and he is out of his mind. Why listen to him? Others were saying, these are not the words of one who has a demon. Can a demon open the eyes of the blind? And we thank God for that reading from his word. It's those last words, can a demon open the eyes of the blind that make the connection with what's gone before? You'll remember that Jesus has been in the temple and he's healed the blind man. And that's led to a controversy because, of course, it's on the Sabbath. It culminates with the blind man being ejected from the synagogue. He's expelled and Jesus goes and find him. And the Jewish leaders are aware of this. And this leads to this discourse from Jesus. He's harking back to the prophets of the Old Testament who saw Jewish leaders as shepherds of the flock, the people of Israel. They were to care for the wounded, seek out the lost, bind up the hurt. And they failed. And so Ezekiel, Isaiah, Zechariah all castigated them for their failure. And in Ezekiel, God says, actually, I've had it with you as leaders. You're no longer going to be the, the, the good shepherds that look after my people. I will take that task to myself. And so when Jesus comes on the scene here and says, I am, that's a loaded phrase in itself. He's saying, I am God. Ego am I. And then he says, the good shepherd. Well, straight away, the Jewish leaders that he's speaking to know it's an indictment of their shepherding of the flock and in particular the blind man. But Jesus doesn't just say he's the good shepherd. He says that he will lay down his life for the sheep. Uh, the picture that I'm going to show you now is by Daniel Bonnell. And uh, as you look at the flock, you can see the cross overshadowing it. It's a picture that's worth pondering. Uh, but so uh, there's something else in this passage. You know, we are sheep. Uh, the Bible says all of, all of us like sheep have gone astray. Uh, but Jesus becomes a sheep on our behalf. It's John the Baptist right at the beginning of John's Gospel who says, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. It's a really important image for John. 
as Jesus is nailed to the cross, uh, we are told that not one of his bones are broken. It's only John that records us that fact for us. Why? Well, because the Passover lamb had to be perfect. None of its bones broken. He who was no who knew no sin becomes sin for us. He who is in the glory of heaven becomes human for us. He from heaven becomes a lamb for us, lost sheep. Such is Jesus' complete love for us. We will be wondering at that love over the coming days and weeks as we approach Passion Tide. Let me uh, finish with the collect for today. And it is St. Patrick's Day, of course, so I hope you enjoy that as well. Almighty God, who in your providence chose your servant Patrick to be the apostle of the Irish people, keep alive in us the fire of the faith he kindled and strengthen us in our pilgrimage towards the light of everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Well, enjoy St. Patrick's and have a great day. God bless. <laughs>